A funny thing happened on the way to preparing for this particular sermon and this particular lesson. Uh, this week, for those of you who, who don't know, I was away for a couple of days, uh, two days, three nights, uh, to do a worship planning uh, retreat. I try to plan out our worship text and some of our songs and prayers and that sort of thing several months in advance so that the musicians know what we're working with and, and can pick songs that, that kind of fit with the theme. And it also is a, is a great discipline for me. Well, in, in the course of doing this, somehow or another in my own notes, I managed to get the lesson for today completely mixed up, okay? Um, I had down one set of verses, and lo and behold, I look at the bulletin a few minutes ago, and, and I say, no, that's, that's not right. And so then I go online, and I check the lectionary, and I said, oh, no, that is right. I'm wrong. Uh, so we're going to have a little experiment here this morning. I'm going to read the lesson that is supposed to be read today, and I'm going to preach, and I'm just going to leave what notes I had, where they were, and I have no idea where this is going to go, folks, okay? So when I said I needed you all to pray for me, I really meant it, all right? From Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34, is that what you've got up there? Yeah, that's, that's what we've got. Oh, yeah, that's, well, that's the one I keep wanting to go back to. Excuse me. 38 through 44. I did 28 through 34, all right? So uh, the right one is 38 through 44. Here we go. As Jesus was teaching, he said, watch out for the legal experts. They like to walk around in long robes. They like to be greeted with honor in the markets. They long for places of honor in the synagogue and at banquets. They are the ones who cheat widows out of their homes. To show off, they say long prayers. They will be judged most harshly. Jesus sat across from the collection box for the temple treasury and observed how the crowd gave their money. Many rich people were throwing in lots of money. One poor widow came forward and put in two small copper coins worth a penny. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I assure you that this poor widow has put in more, more than everyone who's been putting money in the treasury. All of them are giving out of their spare change. But she, from her hopeless poverty, has given everything she had. Even what she needed to live on. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. I'm reminded this morning of a story someone told me many years ago, uh, or several years ago. It was about uh, the person who was telling me this story and, and a friend of hers. When they were, were young girls, um, they, they were sitting out in their little community on the wall that was out in front of their church in, in Kincaid, West Virginia. I said, uh, she and a friend were sitting there, and as it was a hot summer day, and while they were sitting there, the, uh, um, a, a man came walking down the road. He happened to be um, an African-American man, but he, he was walking down the road, and the girls just sat there on the wall, but he stopped right in front of them, and, and he kind of lowered his head, and he said, ladies, it's, uh, it's a terribly hot day out. Uh, do, you, do you reckon you could go in the church 
and get me a glass of water to drink? And the girls kind of looked at each other and decided, okay, um, we've got water in there, we've got glasses, we might as well get him a glass of water. They said, sure, hang on, we'll be right back. And they go in the church, they, they get a glass of water and they bring it back out to him. He drinks it, he says, thank you so much, that was so very kind of you. And he hands him back the glass. Now, and, and, and headed on down the road. It was at that particular moment that the crisis began for the person who was telling me the story. Because, you know, this was in an era of time or during a time in our nation's history when you didn't share water fountains with, with people of different races. And you certainly didn't share drinking utensils. And all of a sudden here, these girls had this glass that had, had been used by, by this stranger, this black man who was just coming down the road. And they weren't sure what to do with it. Well, they said they sat there for a few minutes and neither one of them really wanted to say anything. And then finally, my friend said she took the glass, got up, walked across the street, and threw it into Johnson's Branch, the creek that ran there in front of that church, saying she never knew how she could possibly explain to the church how that glass got put back in their church. Now, she told me this all years and years and years after it happened, 40 years or better after it happened, and saying it was one of the worst moment she ever experienced in her life as she looked back on it and thinking that it was one of those moments when she realized that she didn't give to God anything and in fact if anything she took away from God's kingdom by her actions and she often wondered you know what would have happened if that man had had seen her had witnessed what she did with this glass. She often wondered what would have happened if, you know, someone asked her why she did that. And she said she didn't realize for many years later that she could have washed the glass, put it up on the shelf, and nobody would have known except her. Except her and this other person who were there. See, I, I guess I had thought about that story right now because the story Jesus tells here in Mark's gospel about this, this widow is really a story that no one else should have known. You know, the offering that, that someone put in was, was one that you know, wasn't really supposed to be seen. And yet Jesus put himself in a place where he and his disciples could watch what everyone was giving. And they noticed many of the rich people coming by, putting in, you know, sums of money. And, and then along comes this widow who puts in two tiny copper coins, what would equal in our day and time really less than a penny, but, you know, to make things sound good, we'll call it a penny. And Jesus says about all this, because he bore witness to it, he says, you know, all those big sums of money, they don't mean a whole lot, because, you know, people were just, they were given out of their pocket change for that. They were giving out of, of money they had left over at the end of the month that, you know, they weren't really sure what they were going to do with anyway, so some they put in savings and, and some they gave to the church. But this woman gave from her, from her hopeless poverty, gave even what she had to live on. What Jesus was pointing out to his disciples was that her gratitude for God just 
kind of burst forth from herself so that she could show her faith in a very powerful way. A very powerful way indeed by putting all that she had to live on in that offering plate. You see, everything we do when it comes to living out our faith is really just like that. Oh, we think so much of it is secret. We think it's, it's just like that glass tossed into Johnson branching. Nobody's going to know. But really, it's more like those offerings given in that offering plate there in Jerusalem. The only one that matters, God, sees it all. And in fact, we can't be too sure that there aren't other people watching at the same time. We have been given a great gift in being able to show our faith. And you might think that from reading this particular passage that showing our faith has to do with, you know, how much money we give. Are we willing to give all of our money to Jesus? No, that's not what it's about. What it's about is about showing our gratitude for the faith we have been given. For you see, that's where it all starts, is in receiving what Jesus offers you. God sent his only son into this world so that he may die for us. I wonder, what are you going to give back? To God to pay for that price? Are you ready to give your firstborn? Are you ready to give yourself? Are you ready to give a testimony that would take a glass and on Sunday morning, you know, set that glass on an altar and say, I gave someone a drink of cold water out of this glass. A child of God. Are you willing to to give out of your hopeless poverty? Or give out of what you have to live on? Are you willing to, to love those that you know, you might consider unlovable in this world. You, you know the types, right? The people who are very different than you, who have lifestyles different than you. Maybe their sexual orientation is different than yours. Maybe their color is a little bit different than yours. Maybe their politics is very different than yours. You know, thanks, Obama. Maybe they're different in some way. Maybe they're a member of another faith group altogether. Out of your poverty, the fact that you had nothing till Jesus died for you, are you willing to give of your faith to show love to others? And Jesus said of the widow, she, in her hopeless poverty, gave everything she had, even what she had to live on. What will Jesus say about your gratitude for the faith you have to show? You know, if you'd like to, turn in your bulletins there on the very back of your bulletin. There's a place 
if you were here last week, we had this, this place there. Today, I show my gratitude to God for the gift of, and what you write in there is faith. The gift of faith. And what you need to write under that is, well, just take that bulletin with you this week. And write down those times when you're able to show your faith in such a way like the widow. Where it's not from the abundance of what you have, but maybe from the lack. Where you're able to show your faith and show your love in powerful ways to maybe people you wouldn't chose to first show that love to. Will you take some time to do that this week? Nod your heads. That's all I need. I don't need shouting amens so here. Just kind of nod a little bit. You'll do that? Okay. Then just take a moment and bow with me in prayer. God, we thank you for the gift of faith that you have given to us. And we pray that as we go through this week, we, like that widow many years ago, would show our faith in the same way. For this, Lord, we pray in your name. And amen.